Hi, it's Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to start working on a travel journal for a trip that Rich and I are going to take and I hope you'll stay tuned. Well, part of this is already pre-made. I got it from uh, Paper Craft Society. It was a monthly kit so it came with the actual journal and the three, um, well, the journal cover and the three uh, pads that go in it. I will show you how to make this on your own, but um, today I'm going to show you how my plan, what, no, I guess what my plan is. So, if you didn't know this, if you haven't been watching my channel, then you probably don't know that last summer in July, July 4th, I fell and broke my femur and not just broke it, but I did a twist fracture and I needed surgery to put a plate from my knee to my hip in there. Then my actual incision didn't heal, so I wasn't able to walk on it until this January, so seven months of not walking. In that time, I decided I needed something to look forward to. And believe me, you when you're going through something that lasts that long, you need some kind of serious goal. So my goal was at the end of April, Norwegian Cruise Line does a transatlantic cruise that starts in New York Harbor and then cruises um, across to Belgium, Amsterdam, Ireland ends up in Paris and then London and I wanted to make myself a travel journal. I've always used travel journals on trips that Rich and I have done but I wanted this one to be different and by different I mean I wanted some really interesting components to it. So now I know a lot of you don't like Timu. You don't have to buy any of this on Timu. You can buy it wherever you want but I'm going to show you some of the things I bought and explain what I'm going to do with them. The first thing I bought were all of these little charms. And what I thought I would do with the little charms, if I can make this work. Um, for instance, this is Big Ben, so that would be London. I wanted to have something in my journal that would be uh, a reminder, well not really a reminder, a place uh, like a bookmark for that particular city. So what I thought I would do is I would put Big Ben on this and then I'll just show you in the book what my idea is. So let's say this is probably upside down and backwards but I'm still going to do it this way. Let's say that this is the day that we end up in um, London. I'm going to put that in the book right there so that it dangles out. I might end up having to put um, an extra jump ring on there to make it um, have more hanging room, but for now, we're just gonna go with it this way. And I'm gonna explain each one of these as I go, and if it's not something I'll use, I'd be happy to share it with somebody else if it's something someone else would want. Okay, um, this is the Eiffel Tower, so obviously this is Paris. And um, these are really easy to get on. These are my last two stops, so I'm going to put those in in order. Then there's one of these. Uh, this one is going to be for Amsterdam. And then I think I have a tulip somewhere in here. That would be for Belgium. I might be in a different baggie. Um, or maybe I didn't get a tulip at all. I just thought I did. And then I'll put that one there. Um, I guess I can move the baggie out of the way and put some of these other ones in. This one is obviously um, a Statue of Liberty. So it's the very first spot on the trip. So I'll put it at the beginning. Then there should be one for Canada because we're going to Canada. What is that? Why can't I even see what that is? That is for a beach and I'm not going to any beaches and I'm not going to be using a motorcycle. Oh, there's um, 
this is a lighthouse and I thought I would use this for Ireland. I almost lost the little hole. Couldn't figure out where the little hole was. That is, I think, there. Then, oh, this one says camp. I'm not going to camp. We have six days at sea. And I don't know if I want to do six days at sea, like the ship. I have these little ships, but I thought um, I could at least have a ship to say that, you know, this is the time that we spent at sea. I'm explaining all kinds of crazy stuff to you, aren't I? Then I thought uh, the very, like, uh, the very last day we are going to be in London, but it's the day we fly home. So there is... There are two jets here, so I think I'll use this jet for when we are coming home. That's when I can wrap up my book. Uh, when we go on trips, you don't know this about us probably, but if you've been with us, me a while, you probably know this. We are cursed travelers. Everything seems to go wrong with us, and we've been uh, in... Torna or yeah, not tornadoes. We've been in hurricanes. We've been delayed for three days on trips. We, I mean, we've we've had all kinds of crazy things go wrong with us on trips. So um, uh, I do worry about the whole: Are we going to be stuck somewhere, or are we going to be? Are we going to get there at all because of my health? So these are the things I worry about because, like I said, we are cursed travelers. We're cursed to the point that our friends won't travel with us because they don't want to get stuck somewhere. Isn't that nice? <laughs> it's not. It's true. It's realistic. That's. It's not. It's not a matter of being nice or not. It's. It's the truth. So hopefully you can see. I'm just putting each one of these on. I know I thought I had a shamrock. I'll show you. I bought a. Those are my boats. I have one more boat, I think. You wouldn't think these would all get stuck together when they're just in a bag, but they did. Okay, there's all of my ships. Okay, then in another bag, I got this. Set. and this is a keychain I didn't get it for the keychain I thought it'd be fun as a dangle like if I took this off of this and use it as a dangle it's basically um, uh, there I'll flip them over so you can see it it's an anchor and um, the wheel of the ship and then a sailboat and a compass I just thought that'd be fun as a dangle don't you just know it and then I got this fun thing. Okay, this one I thought I might put on the front of the um, book. It's a passport, it's a globe, and it's a plane. And um, I thought it also had a ship on it, but I guess it doesn't. Back to my other loose ones. I have a passport and a camera. I figured for uh, just like for the day that we um, fly to New York, we're flying in a day early because I think I've told you we're cursed travelers and we've been stuck um, in an airport. Okay, the last time we went on a big cruise was for our 25th anniversary, which was okay 17 years ago and it was it was going to be over Christmas and we were leaving out of Pittsburgh we were flying from Pittsburgh to Newark from Newark to Barcelona where we were going to catch our cruise ship we left on a Thursday because as I said we are cursed travelers and Sunday was when our flight was supposed to leave so with that in mind, it gives you four days to get there, right? Four days. So we are at the airport and we start hearing about a snowstorm in um, Newark. 
and that becomes problematic and they get on the speaker and they say well we have a little bit of issue uh, our the plane that we're taking isn't big enough to fly into this snowstorm in newark so unfortunately you're going to have to reroute so just come up and we'll reroute you great so rich gets up there no we both went up and the lady looks at where we're going she you know how they type for i don't know an hour and a half and in the end, she says, and I quote, I can get you there next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. I just started to cry and left and went to the bathroom and, and let Rich handle it. He says to the woman, look, that's not going to work. Our cruise ship leaves on Sunday. And if you've ever um, dealt with airline people, they really want to say to you, well, you should have thought ahead and gotten and given yourself more time to get there. What's she going to say? I gave myself four days to get there. I should have gotten there in four days. So she starts looking around and she finally figures out that she can get us there by going from Pittsburgh to Cleveland, where there was a bigger jet in Cleveland, from Cleveland to Newark, from Newark to Madrid, from Madrid to Barcelona. That sounded okay. No problem. We're, you know, as I think I've said before, oh, this is the Arc de Triomphe, so I'll put that with my Paris day. Anyway, so um, keep in mind, our luggage is on the first plane that we don't think is going anywhere and we um, get to um, Newark and we sit in Newark for a very long time and the whole time we're sitting there I see this plane beside us and I saw the number on the plane and that number just happened to be the plane that we should have been on so I know our luggage is right there but of course you can't switch planes now you're stuck you're you're gonna stay there forever so we um, wrote it out. We get to Barcelona the next day, and of course our luggage isn't there. Why would it be? As I've said, we are cursed travelers. Nothing, virtually nothing at this point throws us for a loop. We're now it's Saturday morning because you know it takes you a while to get there, and then when you finally get there. Of course, our luggage is nowhere to be found. We get to the hotel, and the hotel, we tell them we don't have any luggage, and they're very nice. They said they would search for our luggage for us, um, and they also told us, make sure you call the airport and call your, call your flight, blah, blah, blah. We called everybody. We did everything we could possibly do. We bought more clothes because... All we had was our carry-on with maybe a day or two's clothes, and this was a two-week cruise. And um, now it's Sunday. Again, we're leaving Sunday night. And it gets to be Sunday afternoon. Still no luggage. So we go to the ship. And because it was our 25th anniversary, we arranged to get a, um, a suite that was, it gave you a butler. It was really, really wonderful. Again, it was a once in a lifetime trip. So the butler says to us, let me unpack your luggage. And we said, oh, no need to do that. This is all we've got. The guy looks at us like we slapped him. And he said, what do you mean that's all your luggage? And we said, well, our luggage is lost. And again, we're unfazed by this because we think, eh, probably not gonna ever get that luggage. So he contacts the head concierge of the ship. The concierge comes to us and says the funniest thing. Um, maybe it won't be funny to you. It was really sweet, but it was also super funny. She says, oh, I heard about your luggage. I feel so badly about it. We have a lost and found. I'd be more than happy to let you go through the lost and found and wear, you know, wear whatever you find. I picture me wearing sparkly ball gowns for two weeks and thank her kindly but say no. But the whole time we kept laughing about me going to the Lost and Found and getting some sparkly ball gowns. Anyway, we left port. We went to supper. We figured, well, that's it. Our luggage didn't make it. We get back from supper and in between us going, somehow our luggage showed up. I have no idea. It was an act of God. 
This butler was so tickled, he couldn't stand himself. He said, guess what showed up? We frankly didn't even believe it was our luggage because, you know, like I said, we are cursed travelers. And it was our luggage, and so we had luggage. And um, that's how our trips go. Back to the project. So we, I'm going to be using all of these to attach onto each of our books in the spots where I think they'll belong. But again, um, those spots will change throughout the course of the time that we're on the ship. If any of you are interested in a sailboat, something that looks like maybe the Russian embassy that I don't know what that is, a motorcycle, a camp, uh, sign and I guess that's it because I'll probably use those if any of you are interested in these I'd be happy to mail them to you just email me my email address is on my channel you just email it to me and um, I'll be happy to mail them to you if you give me your address whichever ones you want you want them all take them all glad to send them to you so that's those okay the other thing I got which I thought was really fun was this set of they're either stickers or rub-ons I don't know for sure at this point I think they're stickers hold on and I'll tell you for sure this could be a trick nope they're stickers Ooh, how fun are these um, this one has bonjour Paris it has you know all kinds of architectural things this one I um, some of these I clearly won't use. They're more like for a planner. I won't use those, but I will use this one that's for um, England. And um, I don't know. This one has a checklist on it of things you take. And anyway, I have a whole bunch of stickers. And then I'm going to put those as I do the journal. Then the other thing that I got... I'm just going to throw those off this side because I don't know how to store those. I think I'll probably make a pocket for them in the book. Then I got these. These are really fun. They're actual fake stamps from cities all over the world. And um, I thought they would be really fun to use, again, in the book. I don't know how it became so uh, messed up, but it did. Okay, things are looking up. It's not as bad as it was a minute ago. So my plan is that these kinds of things I'll use on the trip. And then um, the, the rest of the things that I'm showing you are going to be um, to decorate the outside of the book. Now, when I say decorate the outside of the book, I also bought specific paper for the book for the trip. And that I got at Joann's. It's called, it's from Die Cuts with a View. And it's called World Maps. Hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna turn it sideways so I can open it up and you can see some of these. Some of them are maps of individual places. Some of them are maps of like part of the world. Some of them are looking at it from up above. Some of them, like this one, is Egypt and the Middle East. And then this one is, I think it's, I don't know where that is. It's hard to see. I don't know where that is. I'd have to look at it straight on. And then there are some cut aparts, but the one that I want to use for the outside I really love this one though it's so fun the one I want to use for the outside of the big journal there is a problem with this keep in mind this is for the outside of this journal and originally the thing that concerned me was that I have this but what I'm going to do oh this is that thing that goes around and holds it shut what I'm going to do with this is pull it out because I don't need it. And then what I want to do is I want to make the England kind of make it like 
and I guess I'll have to show you. This is the British Isles, so we're going to be going basically in this area and this area. So I kind of just wanted it to be so that it was um, centered, or not centered, yeah, well, I guess centered, over in that part of the, of the map. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to see how tall my piece is, my piece, my book. I think it might be around nine inches, but I might be making that up too. It's about eight and a half inches. So I think I'm going to make this nine and a half inches tall. And I think I'm going to take, well, I've got to take that little circly part off of the top if you've never played like this before. And luckily, I've got one of the, the little line that I can just cut that with. So I need it to be nine and a half inches. That gives me an, an extra inch at the top and the bottom. And that's fine because I just want to have the United States um, and Canada and then, of course, on the other side, the um, other pieces that I need would be this part, Northern Europe, like up in here is what I want on my front cover. And um, I want to see if this is big enough. kind of hope it is. I don't kind of hope it is. I really hope it is. Uh, no, Ooh, it's making me a little scared. I think I can do it if I'm really tight with my borders. If I only have like a half an inch to, yeah, I think it'll work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna score it because why wouldn't I? I wanna make it so that when I score this, that my folds are going to be clean and that it's going to make it so that the paper really bends where I need it to and really adheres where I need it to. Those little stamps are just rolling everywhere. Get out of my way, stamps. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we're feeling good about things. All right. So... If I look at it like that, let's see, that is about five. I've got to make sure I'm straight. I'm going to make it five and a quarter. Should I do this or should I not do it? I'm afraid if I do it, I'm going to mess it up. Okay, then the actual, um, the back binding part, whatever that's called, you guys fill in that gap there, is one and three quarters. Wait, I got to do it close up and in person because, you know, it looks like it's one and a half, a little bit. Maybe it's one and, oh boy. I'm going to make it one line pass one and a half so if it's five and a quarter then one and a half would make it six and three quarters and if I need another mark or another if I need to make my um, score a little bit wider I guess I can do that so let's see how we've done so far I also I'm going to want to put scores at the top and the bottom. As you'll remember, I think I gave myself like a half an inch. Or maybe it's not even that much. It's more like... Hmm, I think I could do... I'm not, going to, I'm not going to score it. Because if I score it, I think I'll screw that up. Let's see how that did. I think this will work. Okay. Now that I'm done talking to myself, the first thing I'm going to want to do is I want to make sure 
that those score marks are going to work. Because you know, there's a chance that they won't. And I'm really going to make sure my crease is nice and clean. This is the front. I don't know about that little. I don't think. I don't think my scores are. I don't think I have enough of a score. I think I'm going to have to make my scores bigger. I like that they have kind of two scores on either side. So I think I'll do that too. Why won't I? I'm just going to be off camera to do this part because it's way easier than trying to do it another way. I definitely don't want this to be ruined but if I'm going to ruin it now's the time because I have an extra of this piece of paper you know what I'm saying if you're going to break it if you're going to ruin your whole project ruin it at the beginning rather than later okay so then I want to I want to get these other folds the other thing you have to remember is that your book can get wider so you want these other scores to be available for the wider issue you might have and I don't know if any of you go on trips where you do journals but the reason I do journals is I like to document all the horrible things that happen to us on trips so we can laugh about it later and I also at the end of each trip Rich and I always write down, well, I write it down for both of us. We always write down our favorite three things we ate, our favorite moment, and there's one other thing we write now. i got to think about that. It's been a while since we've gone on a trip. Anyway, those are the things that we like to write so that we, um, we have that in our book. That is how we're doing it. I also want to, I think, make, um, well, I'll put this on so you can see it. I think I want to have these hang across the front or along the end, like maybe here. I can't decide. I think along the, that end might be the easiest way to do it. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I'm a little bit nervous about my paper not being enough to... I have to go this way more. Alright, so I'm going to put... Should I put the holes here? You know, these are the things I think about all the time. Should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? Did I do it right? Did I do it wrong? These are the things I fret about. I do think I want to poke my holes in this part. And it is, let's say it's eight and a half. So four and a quarter would be half. This would be the center, so I think I want to make one hole like right there. Then another hole right there. I got my holes. They might not even be in the right position. We know this is our front, and we know we need tear tape. I'm not just going to use tear tape. I'm also going to be using. Um, I'm also going to be using. Man, I can't think of the word. Wet glue. Why well, I couldn't think of that? I don't know. These are you know you got to question things like I can't remember the word wet glue.
just don't want to have any of it not be wet because if it's not wet and I lay this paper down, it's there for good, if you know what I'm saying. Secure and for good. Look, I got, I've got things stuck everywhere. All right. Cross your fingers. This is the part that gets scary. All right, we want to center it. So I'm going to put it sideways like this. And I want to make sure that my papers that I have about the same amount on the top and the bottom. Let's see how we did. Let's see if we have enough room on the other side that I'm covering it with paper and then I'm not going to cry. I mean, I might cry still because, you know, what if I do a great job and then I'll cry because I did a great job. These are the things, you know. And you want to make sure you get every one of these little creases. See, this is what I was afraid would happen, that I wouldn't have much on this. Don't worry, because I'm just not going to worry about any of that. So what I did when I was off screen is I worried about um, how this side doesn't have any paper that hangs over the edge. But I'm not going to really fret about that because I have... Um, corners that I'm going to put on these that are um, like brass corners. I'm going to put a little bit of tear tape on the inside right here and I've snipped at each of the two scores. Hopefully you can see that. See right here I cut it and then I cut off a little bit of it. I'm going to put a little bit of wet glue on my paper just to make sure that my body stays where I want it to be and then I'm going to take one of these little clip things and I got the little pink ones they're easier to use I think or maybe they're not and clip one on either end And then I'll show you on the other end how I'm going to do that. See how the paper is so much longer than this section? You can't have it overlap that section at all. It has to stop where the uh, elastic starts. These are elastic. So we're going to take off that and then we're going to take our scissors. As I said, I cut right up to where these score lines are. Sorry, I have to go off camera to do this because I can't get my arm in there. We're going to we're going to attach our sides and when I do that, I um, you can do this a bunch of different ways, but one of the easiest ways to do it is to get your score tool. What I do could be just me, but I like to get the ruler and put it right in the edge of the cardboard binder thing, binder thing, and I'm just going to run it the whole length. Now I could have gone the whole way up here, and I will just for you guys because you know. And then we're going to do the top and the bottom. I'm going to have to turn it around because I'm not that skilled. I don't even know if I can do that because my clips are right there. Why? I don't know. What do you think? Why? All right. And then you can do it without the ruler if you're daring. And, you know, half the time I am and half the time I'm not. There. Then, because you put that score in, you can start getting your paper so it's ready to fold down. Keep in mind, on this side, I don't have that um, overlap of paper. On this side, I do. When you have an overlap of paper, you want to get rid of most of this um, 
part that's laying to the side. And the way I do it is I do like a little half moon. That's probably too far away. But you want it to make it so that you don't have any bulky paper there. And you want it so that it will um, it will fold down and be mitered and not have any um, spot that isn't covered with paper. Like, I don't know if you can see this. In my case, I was going to round the corners, but since I'm using that, um, that little corner thing, I don't know if you do that or not. I don't know what if that'll work for me or not. I could round this. Ugh, we'll think about that in a minute. And don't forget, we're also going to um, need to cover our um, cover our inside with more fun paper. You know, fun paper. I haven't decided what that paper is going to be yet, but some more fun paper is involved. I'm sure I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. You really want to push down on your ends of your, your tear tape because that will make sure that when you go to lift it off that it actually doesn't bring the, the uh, sticky part with it. If you don't do this, then you're going to end up having sticky, sticky tape or sticky stuff left behind. Now before... I um, put my paper in the inside, which I'm going to. I need to jab a hole where that um, the rubbery piece that is the closure for this. We need to make sure that we poke that hole through there so that we know, hopefully, hold on, I'll just poke another hole. You're going to want that hole poke through there because when you put that back paper on you're not going to know where that hole is if you're with me. So I'm going to put more wet glue on uh, the edges that doesn't have tape because the tape that I put on didn't go the whole way across. So then I'm just going to move my clips down put them on so they stay. Now if this piece had been longer than to this hole, see this hole? If it had been longer than, if this paper had gone over that mark, you would have really wanted to um, uh, cut the paper back. You wouldn't want it to go across that hole because you need to be able to have that open so that you can get your um, rubber piece in there, your rubber band. My rubber band is right here. I might lose it at some point, but it's right here. This is the part that goes through here and then wraps around the whole journal. Okay. Now you can see on this corner, I didn't do a great job of, of uh, folding the paper up, but that's also what you can do there if you do this. And, you know, we've all made mistakes like this before. If you do, you can get a little piece of paper. I'm going to take, hopefully, I guess I can pull this up instead. I'm going to get my little piece of paper and I'm going to shove it in there. I need to shove down into this spot. Okay. There. Wait, let me show it to you so you see how I fixed it. See, I just pushed that little piece of paper in. Keep in mind, I'm going to have that little metal cover, so it's not going to be showing in the future. So it's right side up, 
and I'm going to find another piece of paper for the inside and then we'll come back and um, when we come back that's when we'll do the rest of this and we'll also decorate the other two or the, the three inside journals. So I hope you enjoyed this, that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.